This is the first of two lectures about the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, by Dr. Kartik Chandran. This lecture will give an overview of the SDGs and where water fits in them. After Kartik's remark, the impact of water on each of the 17 SDGs will be presented in sound bites by participants from Unleash, the Global Innovation Lab for the SDGs, and other award-winning young professionals. Dr. Kartik Chandran is a professor in the Department of Earth and Environmental Engineering at Columbia University. He's a member of the Expert Group for Global Wastewater Monitoring for the SDGs under the direction of the World Health Organization and UN Habitat. Dr. Chandran is a MacArthur Fellow as well as a former board member of the Water Environment Federation. Welcome, Kartik. Well, hello, everyone. And it is my pleasure indeed today to share some of the experiences, some of the work, and some details that I gathered during my time with the expert group uh, for global wastewater monitoring for the Sustainable Development Goals, which was uh, under the, custo uh, the, well, the custodians for which were the World Health Organization and uh, UN Habitat. Okay, so one of the uh, Sustainable Development Goals, uh, SDG number six, deals squarely with uh, with, with water, but it's not the only one. And as we will see, uh, the important thing to keep in mind is when we talk about water, it's it's good to focus not just on wastewater, not just on drinking water, not just on stormwater, and not just on water alone, uh, since water really touches almost everything that uh, that we that we are engaged in. So, uh, but let's start let's start the discussion with uh, with water. Let's start with the water cycle as a whole, and not just wastewater. So, if you look at if you look at the way we 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 use water the way we envision water today, perhaps a schematic like this comes to mind. So we start here on the left-hand side of the screen with pristine, clean water. That water uh, is where everything starts, and then we use that water for different objectives. We could use it for drinking, we could use it for several other objectives. And ultimately what happens is, uh, as we use water, we also impart to it many, many other constituents, chemical constituents, biological constituents, and ultimately, uh, we produce uh, streams which are not fit for portable use. We cannot drink those streams, and that's what we collectively term uh, with different, different, uh, uh, different uh, uh, terms like wastewater, sewage, uh, and uh, and so on. And so this is really it's really not a cycle. The way we we deal with water for the most part today, it's essentially a straight line. It's a linear model that we use for wastewater for water. We basically start with clean water, we use it, and then we uh, come up with uh, waste streams that are not fit for drinking. They may be fit for other things, but they're not fit for drinking. And then uh, in some parts of the world, we do treat the wastewater and try to uh, uh, cycle back the water. Uh, but for the, most, uh, for, the mo for the most part, for most of the world's population, it is indeed a linear model that's followed and these streams are just discarded out, to the, out into the environment. And so let's now start to dissect the water cycle just a little bit more. And uh, for, for again, again, at a fairly high level, when we talk about water, the two first, the first things that come to mind are drinking water. How do we access drinking? How do, how do we provide uh, the global population with water to drink? And uh, in some parts of the in some parts of the world, this is a fairly formal structure where where you know municipalities and water utilities are are tasked with the with the. Uh, with the provision of clean water for drinking, uh, but again, for most of the world's population, this is this is not formal, uh, this is not regulated, and these are some images that I have that I'm sharing with you from my own uh, uh, from my own uh, uh, you know experiences. And so this is at the bottom. This is in one of the largest uh, slums in uh, in uh, in the world, where you see a network of pipes. Uh, and this is the bottom of a hill, and on top of the hill are just uh, just slums that keep going vertically. And essentially, all of this is informal. These pipes are very well engineered. There are pumps also. You can see these booster pumps. And uh, But the fact remains, all of this is informal. All of this is illegal. And essentially, people find, the, the, the message here is people do find a way to uh, to access drinking water because without drinking water there is no life and as i as i briefly mentioned the slums keep growing vertically and what does one do to sustain access to uh, drinking water from the bottom of the hill we put more and more booster pumps this is by the way this is not an exception this is not an outlier this is how most of the world works by the way uh, just to share something very personal i grew up in uh, delhi in india and uh, well we we had uh, uh, we, we did not tap illegally into the, the water supply, but this is exactly how 
my household at that time when I was growing up, we accessed uh, the city water by putting booster pumps. And imagine the people who did not have access to booster pumps, their, their supply of drinking water was not guaranteed. So this is how, uh, this is how most of the world works. Now let's look at the, just let's go to the other end of the spectrum with wastewater. There are no pipes, there is nothing. For most of the world, the bulk of the world's population, the wastewater that is produced is simply discharged. And this could be in the form of a tiny hole in the back of the, of the, of the house or the apartment, essentially all the sewage running into receiving bodies, rivers, streams, and so on, which act as conduits and pipes to transfer and transport the sewage. And this leads to uh, 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 really uh, uh, massive insults to the environment, uh, impaired environment, impaired human health, and so on. But, uh, but this is really the, the picture that we are faced with when we, when we talk about the water cycle for, the, for most of the world's population. Unreliable access to drinking water, but yes, we find a way around it. Uh, there, are, uh, there are other examples, there are other ways by which populations get access to water. And on the, on the back end, uh, really nothing in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, treatment to complete the water cycle. Now let's let's take a let's take a look at where the SDGs fit in and how they how they can help. Before the Sustainable Development Goals came the Millennium Development Goals, which were which were which were a very good effort in terms of uh, in terms of let's say uh, uh, empowering global populations, reducing poverty, and so on. Uh, the Sustainable Development Goals are far more focused with specific directions, with specific targets, and so on. Uh, the, the, there, are four, there are 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, I must emphasize that all these goals, even though uh, their, their targets, their goals are different, they are, they are intricately connected. And, uh, and, as we tr and, and one of the, one of the overall, overarching goals, directions for the SDGs, are to solve global challenges to address global challenges. And when we talk about addressing global challenges, it's very important to consider that the challenges are all connected. If you try and solve one challenge uh, by challenge in isolation, chances are we're gonna create further challenges and perhaps further problems. And so it is very good to see that even the SDGs are, are, are connected and together they can help uh, alleviate some of the global issues that we that we are facing today, and so SDG six, clean water and sanitation, directly uh, address the, the issues of clean water and sanitation. But there are other uh, there are other challenges, uh, sorry, other goals as well that directly or indirectly uh, that uh, address water as well. And so one of the one of the uh, the, the other uh, challenge that is quite close is also not just clean water and sanitation, surface groundwater, but also life below. Water and this uh, challenge number fourteen also deals with uh, uh, deals with oceans and so on as well. And there are, you know, if we if we really start to dissect some of these other other challenges, when we talk about food, when we talk about good health and well-being, uh, and now more and more so reduce inequalities, uh, water, clean water, access to clean water, access to sanitation is intrinsically embedded within many of the many of the challenges as well. And um, we cannot uh, we cannot ignore. Uh, the challenge relating to climate action as well. So the point here is uh, a lot of common the themes uh, thread through multiple challenges uh, and goals. And uh, and uh, even though we talk about uh, SDG 6, uh, we must keep in mind that uh, uh, the goals are connected and a lot of common challenges are also common to a lot of other goals as well. Okay, so let's let's take a look uh, look at uh, first very high level look at the SDGs themselves, and then we can we can go down into into the water sector. So again, uh, as I as I highlighted, the SDGs and, and the corresponding targets, which are uh, associated with each goal, are integrated and indivisible, and they are global in nature and universally applicable. Now, the, it, it must be kept in mind. Uh, that the targets pertaining to each SDG are aspirational. They are aspirational. They are not. Uh, the idea has never been to uh, impose uh, specific targets and specific goals. But these are uh, largely. They are. They are almost entirely aspirational. Uh, the SDGs offer an excellent framework for different governments around the world to set their own uh, targets, which are contextually appropriate, contextually and socially. Relevant. So it's not. It, there's nothing punitive about the SDGs. They are. They are voluntary. Reporting for the SDGs is voluntary, and uh, these are aspirational as well. And that also allows for uh, uh, innovations, improvements, learnings to be incorporated into the into how each nation 
uh, or community even can uh, can adopt the SDG ultimately to to make uh, to make progress. Thanks, Dr. Chandran, for that summary of the SDGs. Speaking of SDGs, WEF is a partner of Unleash, a nonprofit founded in 2016 with the aim of providing solutions to the SDGs. Every year, it brings together 1,000 young people in a global innovation lab with the goal of creating unique solutions to solve the SDGs. Now we're gonna hear from some of my fellow Unleash graduates and some other young professionals about how water is a common theme that impacts them all. Water is key to SDG 1, no poverty, because having access to clean water and sanitation is integral in people leading healthy lives, enabling opportunities in employment and education. Poverty reduction would not be possible without people having consistent and safe access to clean water and sanitation. With over 70% of the world's freshwater resources tied up in the agricultural sector, it's becoming more challenging than ever to ensure sustainable food production. SDG 6 is inherently linked to ending hunger, improving nutrition, and ensuring sustainable food production. We need to act now to ensure that our farmers are resilient and water efficient in the face of water scarcity. Access to clean water and sanitation is integral to making progress towards SDG 3, good health and well-being. The World Health Organization has made direct links between SDG 6 and the spread of tropical diseases, waterborne diseases, general nutrition, and mortality rates. Access to clean water and sanitation directly impacts health outcomes throughout the world. SDG 4, which is focused on quality education, is so closely intertwined with SDG 6, the goal for clean water and sanitation. Access to clean water and sanitation enables children, particularly girls, to be able to attend school instead of fetching water for their communities. Quality education also enables our communities to make informed decisions on prioritizing clean water and sanitation, and thereby improving the overall health and well-being of the community. Access to clean water and sanitation also helps prevent illnesses, which can promote healthier communities, which thereby enable children to receive more quality education. Access to clean water and sanitation is essential for reaching SDG 5, gender equality, because it disproportionately affects females. Water collection and use in households, specifically in developing countries, is generally the responsibility of women and girls. This means girls aren't able to spend as much time in school getting an education, and access to clean water and sanitation can allow women to focus on their own health and livelihood. COVID-19 highlights the importance of working towards a sustainable common future, a future where access to clean water is not a luxury. Water is critical for electricity generation, and wastewater is a source of renewable clean energy that is affordable, reliable, and sustainable. From vegetables to vehicles, the goods we buy require water to make. Their water footprint is what allows water scarce regions to benefit from the virtual water trade. This is why SDG 6 is necessary for achieving SDG 8, decent work and economic growth. Water is also a force of nature and can disrupt commerce through supply chains, communication, and transportation systems. As water demands grow, it's increasingly important to manage it more responsibly in the communities where we live and recreate. With more people realizing that water is a commodity just like oil and gold, we're really seeing a global boom in water innovation and technology development. Everyone from our neighbor who wants to know the quality of his water to the company that manufactures our shoes are realizing that we all need to become better water stewards. Lucky for us, technology developers and entrepreneurs are really jumping at that call to help us find more sustainable solutions for our water problems, whether it's water monitoring or research recovery. This is why SDG 9 is so crucial to the success of SDG 6, because without continued innovative thinking and technology development, we can't move the ball forward. The disparities between haves and have-nots has never been greater, and this holds true not just for economic inequalities, but also inequalities in access to clean water and sanitation. If we truly want to achieve the goals of SDG 10, which is to reduce inequality, we have to start with this fundamental goal of providing safe and reliable access to water and sanitation facilities to all. And I think this goal is very doable. It is achievable if everyone stands behind it, if you, me, and everyone champions this together. 
water is crucial to building sustainable cities. Community populations aren't slowing down, neither can the ability to provide that community with clean water and sanitation services. A sustainable, connected community allows for optimization and resiliency of water services to ever-changing situations. Water is not a waste. It's a resource that can be recovered into things like fuel or fertilizer to help us grow a circular economy. Every single climatic event of today is connected to water, be it a flood, be it a drought, be it a tropical cyclone, or even the sea level rise. Everything comes back to water. So what I'm saying is that we cannot have climate action without having proper water resource management. So SDG 6 on clean water and sanitation is as connected to SDG 13 on climate action as much as you and I are connected and we are all in this together and we are going to get this done. Water makes up 75% of our planet in the form of oceans and the oceans provide over 50% of oxygen to everyone living on this planet. SDG 15 is about life on land and it's about the sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems and preventing biodiversity loss. Water is of course very important to this SDG goal because water is something that all living things need on land in order to survive. And also freshwater ecosystems are extremely important to um, drink as drinking water source and also serves as a home and habitat for many organisms. So water is crucial to achieving goal 15, life on land. So access to water in Ghana, it's important to the vulnerable community during and post COVID era. And many of the rural communities are not having access to uh, water to even wash their hands to observe the COVID protocols. It's so important that we provide these people an access, else they will not have access to water to help even with their everyday daily life. Thank you. SDG 17, sometimes the most forgotten SDG, is arguably the most important SDG to ensure safe water and sanitation for all to achieve SDG 6. We need partnerships at the grassroots local, state, and federal level amongst public and private entities across 195 different governments. That's a lot of partnership that's needed to ensure safe water and sanitation for everyone. We hope that this video has provided you some key insights into the sustainable development goals and water's importance to meeting the challenges of all 17 of the SDGs. Be sure to check out Dr. Chandran's lecture on SDG 6, Clean Water and Sanitation, later in the 24 Hours of Water playlist. Also, the closing session of WefTech Connect features Hendrik Skolby, founder of Dahlberg and Unleash board member, and Hamdi Abdi, a 2019 Unleash talent, discussing the SDGs and the decade of action for the 2030 goals. Thank you.